What is going on? Movie Meals, Movie Meals got a merch, super comfy, Ooh. loving it. Ooh. Um, <laughs> our top 10 movies of the year. Before we get into that, let's not, uh, you know, not only guys get this amazing merch, trust me, this hoodie is so comfortable. I mean, I don't want to take it off. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, it. Go check all that out, link in the description. We also want to thank our patrons. Uh, who are, are starting to support us please if you are a fan of us go link down in the description follow that link and join our patreon help support us uh, there's a couple different small tiers you can do some bigger tiers um, so please guys go do that go check it out and thank you to steve nitz who is a big supporter of our videos patron there shout out to him uh so let's just get into it our top 10 movies <laughs> of the year this was a weird list to make um but uh, weird so <laughs> i have no real honorable mentions outside of sonic the hedgehog do you have any honorable mentions and if you say scoob i will be upset because that movie sucked no scoob was very disappointing that one really sucked i don't have honorable mentions this year instead i'm gonna list some movies that i wanted to see but haven't been able to yet hopefully i'll get around to them uh, some of these movies include Minari, Bad Education, Promising Young Woman, Sound of Metal, and One Night in Miami. Hopefully I'll get around to watching those. The only one but... of those I've seen is Bad Education, and it was okay and too oh, really? long. Yeah. Mm, okay. Um, the rest of those I had no clue what they are. Was one of, Which one's the one with our girl who kills kills guys i'm seeing that hopefully that's, in the next day that's promising young woman i've told that you that one i tell I you this see. once a day <laughs> uh without movies i've completely fallen off the radar uh of <laughs> you don't know what's going on don't know um, what's happening that's on my list too i'm hopefully seeing that uh in a couple of days oh, I'm jealous. but um all right so why don't we do uh why don't you do your 10 through 6 and then i'll do my 10 through 6 and then we'll do our, uh, we'll do five, four, and then we'll go back and forth with our three, two, one. All right, let's do that. All right, so uh, Kyle, what is your number 10 movie of the year? Number 10, we just did a review for this recently. It's Wonder Woman 1984. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of, there's a lot of flaws within this movie, but you know what? Gal Gadot and Chris Pine really make me uh, enjoy this movie quite a bit more than most people. I still love Patty Jenkins and her direction with this movie, but you know, with his flaws and all, I still had a good time watching Wonder Woman 1984. That's at number 10 for me. I've, I've taken it, I take back, let's just go back and forth until we <laughs> okay. get, uh, let's just do that the whole way. Screw it, Kyle. Yeah. Well, this was right. 2020. It's uh, 2020, who cares? It's almost over. Wonder Woman did not make the list for me. Um, yeah. I, I did enjoy it, you can go check our review out, but it just did not make the list. Uh, I actually went with the documentary, The Social Dilemma for my number 10. Number 10, mm. uh, We've had documentaries pop up on the in the past on some of our our uh, reviews and such, and I this this uh, this documentary is is so good. It it got me sucked in. It is a disturbing, very true, real thing that happens in our world uh, with how we are so addicted to technology, and I just absolutely loved it. So I thought it needed a spot on my top ten because it's not only something that I really enjoyed watching because of the way it was filmed and shot. I thought it was really creative, but it was something I've talked about almost uh, quite often actually since it came out in the summer or whatever, whenever it came out. But so yeah. my number 10 is the social dilemma. Kyle, what's your number nine? My number nine is the movie run. I really enjoyed uh, this movie quite a it. bit. Uh, it, I, what I liked about it was that it was creepy. It was kind of terrifying because it felt uh, almost realistic to me and it, it's terrible and when you know the premise of this movie being about this girl who suffers from some health deficiencies whose mom may not appear what she seems to be and she's pretty much trapped in her home with her mom uh it tends to be really terrifying almost you just feel so trapped along with this main character uh just really inter inter interesting concept that i really enjoyed uh so number nine for me is run i never saw it uh, I remember you telling me about it. Never saw it. Uh, I need to check it out. Uh, my number yeah. nine is the Netflix film The Old Guard with Charlize Theron. Um, I think it's. I think it's <laughs> might be the best action movie of the year. I mean, I love the action. I love the premise. Thought it was so unique, so creative. I just absolutely adored that movie. Um, I, I watched it with my dad, who's just such a sucker for action movies. Um, and and it's it's such a unique story. Great cast. And so I have the old guard at number nine. It's on Netflix right now. Go check it out. Kyle, what is your right. 
number eight. Well, speaking of Netflix, I got the trial of the Chicago seven as my number eight. Wow. I think Aaron Sorkin did a really good. (laughs) You heard me. Uh, It was just, there was a lot of good movies. There was a lot of good movies. What could I say? But um, for the trial of the Chicago seven, I thought Aaron Sorkin did a really good job taking from what he learned with his first directorial debut with Molly's game. And then incorporating uh, what he learned and taking things up a notch with his directing in the trial of Chicago seven. Plus also just his writing is just so good in this movie. All of the cast steals the movie, but especially Sasha Baron Cohen. Like he's easily one of the best performances that I've seen this year, which is really surprising because I'm not the biggest uh, Cohen fan myself, but I got to say, like they just loved his script. I think he did a great job directing this movie and it's on number eight for me. Um, My number eight um, is the holiday film on HBO, uh, Happiest Season. Uh, it, it, it's a weak year and I really adored that movie. It hit me at the right time. <laughs> it was just such a great, great holiday uh, movie. I really loved it. Yes, it's a little paint by numbers while also being different and unique. And I really enjoyed that about it. It made me feel warm. And so I go with the happiest season uh on hbo kyle what is your like number it. seven the invisible man uh i like that they took this horror classic and modernized it but at the same time uh didn't make it too cheesy they still were able to keep like the horror elements and stay true with uh the original classic and i thought that this director did a really good job and is taking this sort of uh, franchise with universal's monster characters and giving it, you know, to filmmakers, making them filmmaker driven instead of, you know, doing uh, the big action cinematic universe type thing. I like what they're doing so far. And I think Invisible Man did a really good job at modernizing this uh, monster. So that was my number seven. Uh, my number seven is Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Just saw it on Netflix. Uh, mm. Adored the movie. You can go check our review out there. I thought, I mean, RIP to the King, Wakanda Forever, Chadwick Boseman is just an absolute monster yeah. uh, in this movie. It made it on my number seven of the year. Uh, Kyle, what's your number six? Uh, the Five Bloods. I thought Spike Lee did a really great job at uh, capturing this uh, story that I, you know, never really thought of. That was a, it was a movie that I just have never really seen before out of Spike Lee or of, out, out of anyone really, but Uh, I really was impacted by the themes that were throughout this movie. I thought the acting was, you know, really, really good, especially, uh, well, I'm now spacing on this guy's name, unfortunately, but uh, if anyone has seen this movie, you probably know who I'm talking about. I'm just spacing on his name, but uh, the performances were all really good. I thought the themes of this movie were really impactful, and uh, I liked what I saw out of this from Spike Lee. I thought he did a really great job directing this movie. Are you talking about DeLeroy Lindo? Yes, thank you. Delroy Name Lindo, sorry. Um, my number six is Tenant, Christopher Nolan's uh, uh, very <laughs> good uh, time travel movie. I, I just, I loved it. it. It took me a little bit to get into it. It's got some of these issues. You can go check that review out also on the channel. Um, but that makes it on my number six. I'm yeah. getting nervous because Kyle and I, was always, we've always had one overlap. And I, our, our list are so wild. You've already got two of my top <laughs> five. You've knocked two of my top five out. So I'm hoping, yeah. what, will we, will 2020 take the overlap away? We'll find out in the top five. Kyle, what is your number five? My number five is Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Uh, like Alex was saying, Chadwick Boseman, he does an incredible job in this performance, but so does Viola Davis. I really enjoy that their character's uh, we're sort of polar opposites of each other. I like the tension that they brought with each of their characters uh, when they were facing against each other, but also when they were dealing with their own things, whether it's racism, whether it's, you know, over creative control of the music that they were trying to do or of explain like their past history and what they've had to go through as African-Americans. I thought this story did a really great job of capturing all those elements and, you know, just such a great performance by those two. It just had to land on my t- um, number five for me. My number five is The Invisible Man. It's unique. It's creative. Wow. It's an absolute yeah. monster, no pun intended, of a horror film. It is fantastic. <laughs> Relooking at everything that came out this year, it had to have made it on the top five for me because nice. I love that movie. It's so good. Uh, so Kyle, what's me. your number four? Number four for me is The Way Back. I don't know if anyone remembers this movie, but it was the uh, basketball movie starring Ben Affleck that oh. 
premiered in what March before the pandemic even happened. Uh, and it was one that I really enjoyed in the moment, but I wasn't too sure if it would make it all the way into like my top 10 of 2020. But every time that I kept thinking about this movie, I just gained more and more respect for this uh, movie. I thought it did a really great job at becoming a character study first and a, and a sports movie second. I still enjoyed the sports angles of it, but what really was the driving force for me was Ben Affleck in this lead role of this character study that almost really paralleled with his, uh, you know, problems that he was dealing with at the time. So I thought that this movie did a really great job. It didn't end the way that I expected it to end, and I loved it for that, and I just keep thinking about it. So I have to put it here on number four. Uh, I had The Way Back as my number 10 before I decided to put uh, The Social Dilemma over it. I completely mm. second everything you say. The Way Back was awesome. Yeah. But the guy who made Warrior, I mean, it's just amazing. Uh, my yeah. number four is Defy Good Bloods. Director. Not at five, at four. Defy Bloods. Oh, we're so close. Said, Go check our review out. It's uh, it's just a monster of a movie. It's so good. It's funny. Yeah. It's 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 charming. It's scary. It's violent. It's... It is Spike Lee at the best. And again, RIP to the King, Wakanda forever. Chadwick Boseman for not being in it very much does a great job. All the other actors do. Uh, yeah, so Kyle, we're in the top three. And I, you've already knocked one of my three off. All right. so, so this is going to get nuts. What's your uh, number three here? <laughs> my number three is Soul. And I just saw it yesterday. <laughs> wow. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but man uh, soul is such a great pixar movie i mean we know that with pixar movies you know they're aimed for kids but they really have such mature themes for adults but somehow soul it almost feels like the most adult most mature uh pixar movie that i have ever seen like for some reason the themes aren't really the themes that you would expect at the start of the movie they're themes of you know what the meaning of life is for some people what it means to be you know, among the living, what it means to follow your dreams and your passions, what are your hopes, what's most important in your life. And, you know, you don't think that those are the themes that are going to be at the start of this movie. And you don't see a lot of the plot points coming that happens in this movie. But I think by creating some twists and turns and by uh, being really mature and uh, respectful to its audience, like it just does such an incredible job at telling a story such, uh, such as the meaning of life. And I think for 2020, we could all use some perspective. So for me, number three is soul. Yeah, you really gave a good review there. Somebody's upset he wasn't in Did the I review glitch out? with me. No, I'm just saying you just had a lot to say. <laughs> I missed could out. Have, could have been in my <laughs> review. Uh, <laughs> my number three is The Trial of the Chicago 7. <laughs> it's a powerhouse movie. Mm. Uh, you said Sasha Baron Cohen. He does steal the show, but who Jeremy Strong, for me, steals it even more. He is so good. Everybody is yeah. so good. It's nice seeing Eddie Redmayne not in something wacky because he's kind of gone on a wacky train. Um, that movie is awesome. Again, our review is up. Uh, so I have the trial of the Chicago seven and I'm getting real nervous because I think we might have the same number one if we're, unless you ruin my day here. Mm. So what's your uh, number two? My number two is Palm Springs. Really? All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, I thought this was easily the funniest movie of the year. Uh, it takes the, you know, Groundhog Day type story and, you know, flips it on his head, does some things a bit differently. And, you know, the two leads, the romantic leads of the movie, they're just, you know, so charismatic, so charming, and they just make this story so much fun. I it was able to see it over Christmas and I loved it even more the second time. So for me, on number two, it's Palm Springs. Um, my number two, I have no idea what your number one is. My number two is Soul. <laughs> Uh, yes, might be a little bit of recency bias, but I think it is one of the best Pixar movies to come out in a while. Uh, yeah. You can go check my full review out. I mean, that movie handles death in such a inc incredible way. Um, mm -hmm. But all right, so number one, Kyle, what you got? I got Tenet as my number one. <laughs> oh, I didn't even think of that. Uh, Tenet is not number one, and you've made a great mistake. You have chosen poorly. Oh. <laughs> well what i liked out of tenet was that you know it was the most uh entertaining movie for me this year i was sure. really looking forward to what nolan had in store for this movie and for me it didn't disappoint is it one of nolan's best probably not like i think he did a, did an even better job with some other movies but i still was thoroughly entertained i still liked the story that he presented and you know it gave me the best uh movie experience out of 2020 so for me especially for this year it has to be at number one uh, it was my number six, so it does not have to be there, sir. Um, my number one was Palm Springs, and I didn't even think it was close. 
Palm Springs <laughs> to me, top to bottom, is yeah. the best movie. What I wish I've, I, I agree with you on Tenet with being such a spectacle, especially because that was the first movie I had seen after not being in the theater for so long. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, it was hard not to put it higher. But when I, when I think of the movie I enjoyed the most, that I thought had the most to it, the best structure, the best script from top to bottom, it, it's Palm Springs for me. That's my number one movie of 2020, Palm Springs. Springs, Kyle's got Tenet. Guys, what's your list? Comment down below. Are our lists wacky? What did we forget? What did we not forget? Is Sonic the Hedgehog didn't make the list and I've regretted it ever, every second since. <laughs> so guys, do all that great stuff. Again, thank you to our patrons. Those will be flashing on the screen. You guys are awesome for supporting us. Go check out our merch. Remember to like us, subscribe, and share. And as always, thanks for watching, Mom. See you guys. <laughs>